Oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle, all oh, for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today. Uh, but first, I want to say uh, shout out to MD. He's got a family emergency, so he won't be able to make this show. But let me, uh, man, shout out to Deacon, shout out to Twin, shout out to MD, man. Um, let me um, remind some people that we have a show today. <laughs> And uh, let me get on here. Okay, y'all, hold on one second, y'all. Hey, uh oh. What's hold going on. on? What's going on? <laughs> How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Okay. Yeah. Wait, hold on, because I, I'm getting your call at the same time. Right. Okay, got it. Okay, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Okay. Ah, technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. All right. We, we, every time, you know, we have a new setup. So right. uh, I always have to get used to something new. Yep, that's right. But that's life in itself, right? Yes. Nothing stays the same unless you're dead and then it stays exactly the same. Hello, twin. It's good to have you here. <laughs> hey Deacon. Okay. Yeah. MD Jamal said he wanted his <laughs> Yeah. Um Okay, so MD he said he had a family emergency, so he's not gonna make it today. Oh, totally understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it just, just happened. And uh I sent Yang a message, so hopefully he gets it. Um I yeah. Think, yeah. Okay, so let me see if I could get our setup uh the way that it's like fitting us here. Okay. okay. I think we're good. So okay. um, I, I think regardless, I mean, we have so much to talk about this yeah, week and absolutely. so much amazing uh, research and conversations happening right now because there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of conversation uh, happening in the media. Yep. Sorry, one second. Come in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so there's a lot happening in the media right now uh, when we're discussing, of course, uh, the current financial situation. Right. You know, there's a lot of uh, fear. Uh, I, I learned a new acronym, FUD. I like uh -oh. this FUD. <laughs> FUD. <laughs> FUD. Elmer FUD. <laughs> Elmer FUD. <laughs> Bunch of Elmer FUD. Yeah. What, what is it? Fear, uncertainty, and uh, oh gosh, fear, uncertainty, and not disillusionment. I, I'm I'm like losing that D, but uh, you know, basically, you know, we're talking about uh, emotions here. Right. And uh, so, you know, our emotions are very wrapped up in our financial situation because right. uh, we've been taught to connect that directly. Um, and for good reason, because uh, as we discussed last week, uh, for Black Americans, America's financial situation really determined how many lynchings took place at the beginning, at the turn of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. It really determined uh, whether or not Black uh, communities would be allowed to continue operating and thriving, right. uh, or if uh, governments, citizens, uh, non-Black citizens particularly, uh, would uh, create an all-out assault against us. Right. So this is a really uncomfortable time because um, it really asked the question, you know, with this current administration, with all these bills being put out, exactly. uh, navigating our way through these bills and understanding them and what it means at the cusp of, uh, you know, um, just, you know, at the break of the George Floyd incident that uh, inspired worldwide protests uh, mm -hmm. for Black Lives Matters, and not just for Black Lives Matters, but for people who really um, understand that the civil rights movement still has a lot of movements to make. Um, but um, but what does that mean where we are today? Uh, so, uh, Black Sun, thank you for inviting me to come back and do a part two 
uh, talking about uh, black economics, particularly right. where we where we stand in this present day and mm -hmm. how we can move forward, because I think that's the most important answer to get to. You know, we don't want to just um, talk about what's happened. We want to know how we can learn from what's happened so that we can do something about where we are today and then create the future we want to see. That's right. Um, so Sorry. I know we talked about how, like the Obama, I mean, I said Obama, Biden administration yeah. <laughs> was paying, um, the farmers 38,000 to, for each acre of crops destroyed, oil wasted. I mean, mm. resources that I, I was, it looks like me to trying to manufacture a man-made famine to me. Because I can't mm. think of any other reason why you would waste so many good crops, good crops. I mean, the look on the farmers' faces, they were just like, they look sick, man. They really look sick. Like, dang, I really don't want to do this, but they're paying me. So, oh, well, but it's like in the back of your mind and, you know, you, you, you human conscious, you're like, this ain't right. This can't be right, you know? Right, right. You know. I mean, I think that it raises a lot of questions. So some of the things that we know that have been taking place since uh, this uh, uh, pandemic, pandemic, mm -hmm. whatever people want to call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been a lot going on um, that raises a lot of interesting questions about our economic situation. So, you know, some of the players who are... Um, who've been pivotal in, in this uh, pandemic, this coronavirus episode, are also um, big players in this episode that we are uh, experiencing now and, and this uncertainty that we're about to go into. For example, uh, Bill Gates, why right. did he purchase so much farmland and so much pr property in general um, in these recent years, and why does he have such a hand in our future um, agricultural Agriculture, right. um, infrastructure? I mean, once again, the first question I asked, you know, when when he became our world health uh, spokesperson voice uh, for this uh, global pandemic, I just kept asking myself, what does an IT guy have to do with um, a, a global pandemic? I like, how does he have authority or um, know-how right. um, to have any authority or, or any authoritative voice in this conversation whatsoever? And yet right. he is considered, I mean, you know, who? World Health Organization. Uh, CDC is really considering what this guy has to say. Jeez, and as far yeah. as I remember, he has no degrees or no um, studies, no formal studies in, um, you know, in uh, epidemic epidemiology. He has no history of, um, you know, scientific degrees or studies in any of the right. uh disciplines of study of, of of scientific study right um he's not a doctor and yet he is a huge voice in our right. um our uh vaccination conversation <laughs> right so it, that, you know that really like rang a lot of bells for red me bells, and my yeah. red flags were waving yeah. going mm, i said red I, bells red flags yeah yeah i'm not yeah. feeling comfortable about this guy having anything to say about anything except for why my computer is crashing now and let me ask you nature mom can you you sent me the thing about the farmers destroying their crops did mm -hmm. that happen at the same time that he purchased the potato farm i mean what's going on here is i mean this so the purchases uh, that he's been making for land in general have been going on since uh, the start of the COVID-19 epidemic. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. His involvement with um, agriculture is not new. You know, okay. he's had a huge hand in many projects that took place in Africa, in right. India. Um, and with what I would have to say, very suspicious results. Um, so before 
COVID-19 and him being considered a world leader in that conversation, there was a lot of um, complaints. There was a lot of people who were um, talking about, uh, you know, at young ages, they were completely sterilized, unable to start families um, based on his Bill and Melinda Gates program. Um, so these are the vaccines they were injecting in the people. The, these the were the world. vaccines, particularly okay. in India. Like the most complaints that I could find at that time were coming from India. Right. Um, when the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic uh, hit, by the time it hit America, these videos were disappearing, well, oh, and then right. you were having these like um, doctors. Um, you know, by name only, come onto the scene of YouTube. <laughs> uh, most, you know, sorry, you guys, but we love YouTube. It's full of great information, but it is not a viable source. You know, it is right, not right. peer reviewed. It is not, you know, being examined. Um, should we say? Uh, um, it's not being examined without um, agenda. No, no t- scientific scrutiny either. Yeah, it's just right. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so you know, I, when I'm thinking about um, academic uh, libraries and resources to get information versus Google versus YouTube, <laughs> I'm sorry, right, but yeah, right. they do fall very, very far behind mm-hmm. in where I'm gonna mm-hmm. get my data from. And, you know, as I shared with you last week, I'm very, um, very careful, even in the scientific community, because we know that we have a a history of pseudo scientism. We have a history of racial scientism um, and um, and sponsored scientism. So we really have to check our sources and know what we're looking at and who's funding what and what is the agenda. Are we looking at a source that was completely, you know, um, uh, you know, studied and researched because this information would be vital to the advancement of humankind and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, people supported it across many different lines or is this information that particular companies you know funded and made sure right. that had a bias uh point of view i always say it nature mom like all these um i always tell people if you have any evil uh like people say oh well eating plants this and that and email oh and meat's good for you i was like oh who funded that you know what I'm saying? And all usually the meat, deer, and eggs, they got enough money to fund their own media, their own propaganda. So yeah, that's a good point. But um, go ahead. I'm, I mean, I, mean I would have to agree with you. Like if I'm trying to learn about healthy eating mm-hmm. and I am getting uh, information from the world leading oncology centers on, mm-hmm. you know, meat's good for you. If they're saying that, then I'm going to listen to you. Most of them are actually saying fruits and vegetables are the best sources Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, regenerating ourselves and rebuilding our bodies uh, towards health and to prepare ourselves for, you know, uh, cancer, for, you know, uh, fighting different um, diseases. But if I find a source who is, um, if if I'm, I'm finding a group of ranchers, you know, uh, or, you know, <laughs> who's telling me how great meat is for me, I'm right. definitely going to be looking for um, right, right. alternative That's sources. Right. Uh, to Well, like you count. said, but it goes back to peer review, you know, and a lot of these, yeah, people, they, yeah. you know, they try to pass yeah. off as legitimate science sources. But, you know, um, let me ask you real quick, because. Mm-hmm. Okay, please. Now, I want to get back to, well, like the farming because you know we were talking about you know last week how you know the you know us controlling a state uh shout out to angel the mississippi campaign that we could and i don't i think europe has already done it in some places where they were refusing monsanto seeds is this um, mostly we're, we're talking about russia you know uh-huh. who refused monsanto's uh oh. they completely rejected monsanto's right um in russia. actuality 
Yeah, it was Russia who mm. did it. Um, interesting. Very interesting. I mean, there are other countries who resisted Monsanto's as well. I believe uh, I would have to check the source, but Greenland was also right. one of the other. And I might be confusing information because Greenland during the 2008-9 uh, um, real estate bubble where all the countries wanted to bail out their banks. Um, right. I remember that, yeah, I remember uh, that too, Iceland yeah. was Iceland, one yeah. of the countries that absolutely refused to bail out their banks. And in, in the end, what happened was that every citizen became wealthier uh, um, right. by refusing to give bank bailouts. Where when you look at United States, where, I mean, a blank check <laughs> was given to our <laughs> banks. <laughs> Thanks so by Obama. O, the Obama yeah, right. blank checks. Right. And I think that the numbers have come out to, uh, I, I was given two different uh, pieces of inf information. So the first uh, was 19 trillion uh, that the banks wrote themselves in checks. Right. And the second Jeez. source, uh, the second wave of uh, stimulus money that went to the banks was over 40 trillion, but it still mm -hmm. is being counted because that money just went into a black hole and um, America is still paying that bill. bill. Each American citizen is still paying that bill right. ever since. And now we are in another, um, you know, bear market. We're in another uh, economic bust mm -hmm. and um, more bailouts are being, um, ushered in uh for example uh the forgiveness of the student loans now i have no problem whatsoever about forgiving these student loans and putting money back into the economy but what is actually happening is uh upper echelon once again is getting the majority i mean there i think mm -hmm. that the the maximum uh forgiveness was supposed to be twenty thousand per student right and what's actually happening are the wealthiest uh same you know uh, descendants of of uh, descendants right. of shadow slave owners are receiving um over i i think re i'd read today one got 1.8 or 1.4 billion right, in right. in student loan forgiveness another got 2.3 million sorry million if i didn't say that before i heard billion um but it's hard to hear sometimes um million in forgiveness uh one journalist uh she got one point uh one uh, well, sorry, 108,000 um, plus in, in forgiveness. Now, these aren't your every average everyday people like you and me who are going to Howard University or who are, you know, going to local universities and come from um, middle to low income, income class right. families, you know, who really need this stimulus in our economy. Um, these are people who are already... Um, they've already gotten tons of connections of bailouts uh, during the pandemic. They've got tons of bailouts mm -hmm. for the uh, bank crisis and the uh, 2008-9 uh, real estate crisis. They keep getting bailouts. Well, and you know, the people who keep suffering are the rest of us who are left. Nick's your mom. Now, you're making me wonder about these cities now, because when we go back to um, Reconstruction, were these cities taxed? Um, so when you say these cities, which cities particularly? Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rosewood, all the prominent black cities. Okay, so not only um, were these cities uh, being taxed, of course. Okay, you okay, know, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, they so were a part of the, the American system. Still, okay. The, you know, the... When when the opportunity came for Black Americans to be considered individual human beings, so that's the first thing, um, taxation was the first part of it. And if you right. weren't able to pay your part, um, then you became subject to someone else carrying your debt, which put you back into a sense of slavery right. or a sense of debt for one thing. And did you um, say, right. Yeah. Uh, and... On top of that, 
uh, when you, um, when these communities were able to stand on their own and they were able to pay their taxation, they were able to gladly pay their taxation. They were saying, please take our tax money and leave us alone. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, then there became the demand through the, the new deal um, was okay. Yeah. Now every American must relinquish their gold because we are no longer going to back our greenback with gold. We need that gold returned back to the American government. So we are asking every single one of you to confiscate, to, to, um, to volunteer your gold to uh, this good country. And uh, if you don't, you're going to go to jail. Right. So there was a, already a fight brewing there because, uh, you know, there were many, as we spoke before, who they fought for their freedoms uh, to be considered a human being in the country. And the little few pieces of valuables that they collected uh, to be able to start their new future. It was all they had. Like we said last week, they began, they were given nothing. They right. were thrown out from every community and the communities that were open to receiving them that were overthrown. And so, you know, where were they left in the end? They were left with um, the last valuables that they had in hand. And then the uh, American government says to them, now we need you to give us those because we need them more than you need them. And um, so there were already tensions growing because a lot of um, citizens did not feel that they um, were represented in the same way as, no their taxation, white no representation. as their white counterparts. There was no federal protections um, as it was promised through the emancipation, as it was promised through right. the New Deal, as it was promised through Reconstruction. There was no, matter of fact, when you're talking about these communities that were thriving on their own, um, as I had to uncover with a heavy heart last week, it was our American government on a local and a federal level right. that are still implicated for dropping bombs, for gunning yeah. down American citizens who were black skinned people and because of the lack of true representation that took place. So when we're looking at where we where, where our government is saying, well, you are our citizens, so relinquish your gold, relinquish your silver, relinquish right. your fine goods to us because we um, are going to give you our notes, which we now call fiat money. Right, right. And we expect that you're going to be happy with this because we're letting you be here. You so that was part of the decline of the prominent black cities was the turning of the gold. And um, well, I'm, I'm know the violence. We talked about that. I mean, last week, yeah. The violence I think is, is, is the absolutely the main source okay. of the, uh, the abolishing okay. of the stronghold of the black communities themselves. Okay. It was, I mean, we, let's, let's be honest with you. You know, if you've got a nice, you know, um, my, 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 my husband's family is from a lineage and we're talking right. about like hundreds of years of lineage of rope making. So I've learned a lot about rope making, you know, in the last couple of decades. And, you know, when you make a very strong, um, multi cord rope system it takes a lot to destroy this so imagine the black communities were these multi-strand we had our own physicians and surgeons we right. had our own dentists we had our own you know arcades you know music systems we had our own now, how did this build up because i think a lot of the fear we're getting we're getting a lot of pushback a lot of fear and i know i was trying to explain that this would be in steps in stages so it wasn't just poof you, you have this bustling city with dentists and doctors and all that stuff i mean was it a build-up because i know uh, agriculture uh, obviously has to be there to feed the people but how i mean yeah okay so you're talking about the members that 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 were the infrastructure of these communities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a lot of these members of this infrastructure 
came from the south they escaped from the south as okay. as descendants of slavery they went to the north because the north was trying to gain power financial power over the the south okay. um they this financial power was mostly driven by a need to have a voting power because with the financial power that the south had for every uh, three slaves that a plantation owner owned three in the South, you had an additional vote. So yeah. imagine, I mean, at any given time, George Washington, uh, Thomas Jefferson, you know, all of these people that they call the four founders uh, of, of uh, the forefathers of America, they had 200 plus slaves at any given time. Right. Multiply that by three, and that's how many votes you have for your own singular body. So it, that was a, a lot of political um, power over the people who wanted to um, build wealth and industrialize in the north. Right. And so the people who were in the north, they weren't, uh, you know, they weren't these, you know, confederacy you know rich powerful uh slave owners who were industrializing through agriculture you know these were people who were actually descendants of indentured slaves right. so you know you have a lot of your uh, uh, italian descents your irish descents you know people who weren't even considered white until uh, much later in history, they were not considered white American, the Anglo um, Americans. Okay. Um, I know a very interesting point. A lot of people don't even know. Well, yeah. No, no, no. But, but yeah, what I, what I wanted to learn was, or what I wanted to really get at was, I mean, you said you had black people, I guess, up North being educated, some becoming. So, yeah. When they fields. left the South, right. they took opportunities that were not available to them in the South. They educated themselves freely. They, they, they. Took so what made them, what made them come back to the South, to these cities? Um, uh, when you say what made them, okay. So there were or a what, lot of people. What inspired who, them? What, I mean. Who, there were a lot what, of people who didn't leave the South. There were a lot of people okay. in the South who were born free. Um, right. So these people uh, had should have had the opportunity to industrialize themselves with the rest of the world. Um, the issue was yeah, but what I'm trying to figure out because you said they started from nothing. So yeah. is it a conglomerate of them people staying, the blacks being educated up north, then coming back down south? Like what? Uh, so I don't, I don't think it really, I mean, I, I think you're talking okay, about so this great, to find my, out. yeah, I'm trying to find out great this migration. This city. Yeah, right. So the this key... migration. So first there was the escape, it's the escape from the South to, towards freedom. Okay. To and more, many right. slaves were trying to escape towards freedom. Freedom was right. in the North because the Northerners um, were willing to support uh, black freedom in order to gain more political votes. So when these people move north and then you had the, uh, you know, the uh, um, Civil War, sorry, right. <laughs> it's later. Uh, it, when you had the Civil War that took place and the, the north actually, they accomplished their goals. They actually won with the help of the black people who left the south and came and joined their numbers. Um, so okay. once, once these people, um, won, the black people had this idea, okay, we have a place to be that's accepting us and we are able to be free. The reality of the situation was there were a lot of people with their agenda, just like today, they only wanted their agenda met. Once their agenda was met and the North won the war over the South, mm -hmm. then they could care less what happened to the black people. Right. They could care less. And many of them, as, um, as uh, MD and I spoke about last week, even conspired to um, remove people who 
found their place in education, found their place okay. in uh, government. They conspired and they created. So there was a new hostility in the North. There wasn't a new. It was a okay, constantly, was you know, once their agenda was met, we don't need you anymore. I mean, let's like call it okay, what so it is. Okay, so this would cause the force back, back down to the South. Um, so let's say it, it forced people of, you know, black people, uh, and, and, and descendants of shadow so slavery. You, know, you see what to, I'm trying to, to go, move. nature mom. I'm trying I'm to totally find out get the you. nucleus there, of it, this It forced them drive. to move. Okay. So the, the question was when you are that descendant and you're asking yourself, okay, I can't go back to the plantation, which some did. And some some went back and they worked with their previous slave owners, right. supposedly as as partners, sharecroppers. And okay. we know how that ended up. <laughs> it didn't end up that great either. Right. Uh, so some went in that direction. Some um, tried to establish their own communities. And that's where you had these these booming communities throughout the North that were mm -hmm. uh, all black communities. Um, then you had great places like Louisiana where people were mixing, so, you know, the native Americans, the Spanish, the French, right. um, you know, everything was great as long as you stayed in your social classes and your social class at that particular time were mostly based on color. And of course, economics, um, economics is always, you know, behind American politics. Um, and, and then you had people who were left, I mean, and there's literally literature and, and paintings where, um, I mean, people would say, you know, throw them out in the street like a dog's, even their fleas would starve. I can't mm -hmm. tell you exactly which source. I mean, that's from, you know, my my uh, college uh, history class. Thank you, Mr. Nelson, many, many years ago. Um, so I, I don't have that source on me, but boy, did it stick in my head that that's how we were, um, we were regarded, um, after like winning our freedom and winning our place in America with these people and, and these people who overthrew the government just absolutely like thought that dogs uh, and fleas were more valuable than we were as, as far as life itself. Um, so so you, so I see what you're saying. There was a lot of things that could cause a drive back from the north, a lot of hostilities. Yeah, so, right? And then you had this great movement to the, to the west. Right. Yeah, right. from 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 these uh, eastern states to the west, because the west had this, you know, um, you, they were accepting everyone. The gold rush. They mm -hmm. didn't care what nationality you were, as long as you could dig a great hole and find us some gold. You know, it, it and we're not just talking about the the yellow gold rush. We're talking about the black gold rush as well. Black crude oil, oil yeah. that was being uh, you know uh, found and pumped all over the West. So you know they didn't care what if you could labor, come. So, okay. you know, it's very interesting how in different points across history, as long as we, you know, had an economic gain right. for the the ruling class, for the people in power, then we we have value. So, the, the, so to the, today, the, the, the <laughs> roads, were, it was multifaceted, basically. You had very, many, very, many as choices. it is right. today. I mean, when are you right. valuable? You're valuable today if you can bounce a ball well. If you can, um, you know, uh, wear the tiniest outfit and halfway sing a note with some auto tune and look good, you know, um, then you're valuable. You know, there's no more like, you know, Beethoven, you know, uh, level musicians because quick money gets you, you know, so much more uh, than uh, than actual like long term skill and and you know. Um, so we look say, at today non entertainment money. value, <laughs> right? So we're looking at today. We're trying to. I mean, mm. we we have, you know, situation where the economy, you know, the gas prices are high, but you know, we could talk about why that is. Joe Biden, of course, but um. You know, what I want to, I guess, kind of get at is, you know, 
what would be the, I guess, the parallel solution? Because, I mean, there's no more gold rush. Right. There's no right. uh, black oil, Texas tea. There's right. no more. Well, I mean, they pretty much got that all up. So what would be the new, in your opinion, just looking at past history, uh, what would be the, I guess, drive for like a, I don't know, like like a state, like a like a campaign Mississippi, like w- w- would it be agriculture? Would it be I don't know what what would I guess drive people to build up another economy? Okay, so I'm I'm assuming that you're speaking specifically about uh, black communities building their own economic backbone again. And, yeah. and taking that brave leap again, because we right, know right. when we learn from history, w- this is what history is trying to teach us is that if we, right. we stand in a pen in, then we're going to be gunned down. And that's what history has taught us. And so what 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 is, you know, besides being a rapper, you know, uh, um, and, uh, you know, a ball player or. A, a sex tape, you know, releaser, you know, mm-hmm. what, what brings us value in, in this, in this modern day, I think is what you're asking me. And I think that, um, okay, I'm going to break this down. You know, there's this guy, um, this economic, uh, you know, higher up, I guess you would call him, okay. um, Ray uh, Dalio. You know, this is a guy who has spent his lifetime really like understanding um, economics, who's really um, um, broken down a cycle of understanding like uh, what are the, you know, he even wrote a book called Principles for uh, Dealing with the Changing World Order, Mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was very interesting um, because it's looking at these cycles throughout history and he goes all the way back to you know ancient chinese dynasties and he's looking at how these cycles keep happening Mm -hmm. very similar to the cycle that we're going through now and he finds all of these um you know pattern uh behaviors that gives us some clues so that we're able to predict in the way that he learned to predict that this is going to happen again. So when I answer your, your question, like what is a what is a motivating factor for us? Okay, so I'm going to break it down. Motivating factor number one is that um, if we keep waiting for our 40 acres in the mule, we're going to be laying on the side of the road uh, with our crack and drugs and everything else they keep pouring in, in guns right. into our neighborhoods waiting to die. Right. And waiting for our children to die. So if we don't, no, wait, um, let's not wait for no handout subsidies. Now I'm for reparations, yeah. but don't even wait for that either. I mean, uh, reparations, I think, will have to be a very organized and structured, um, absolutely, uh, and let's say completely sovereign. Um, you know, hmm. uh, well, you say sovereign. Explain that. Uh, so uh, when I'm reading the white house uh policies and bills and the way that they want to um you know give us money it very much reminds me of uh uh, of post confederacy speech about how black people you know have minds like children and need to be governed and need (laughs) you know someone to you know um you know they're they're so poor and feeble. Well, you niggers need people. some God and hell. We can't just give y'all money and then and, and why or do nothing. you think that they haven't given us reparations yet? Uh, Germany's done it. Belgium right. has done it. All mm-hmm. these other countries. I mean, they've given us South Africa though. It's not even in their country, and right. our country has dropped bombs on our neighborhoods and is documented. They have, there are local governments have overthrown and slain our people repeatedly. Well, and it is could documented. It be because that they don't have the funds? Um. Okay, so let's be honest. No, they don't have the funds. Right. And that's why they keep on um, bailing out banks with printing money. That's right. why they keep on writing checks by money, printing right. money. But question is, why aren't they printing money to give it to us? <laughs> they, they're, they, they are not well, printing that money. inflation, though, uh, Nature Room? That it already it really... is, isn't it? Right, but it wouldn't even, even get worse? I mean, we already got... Okay, I'm sorry, but 
you know, the, the 2011 crisis, uh, the 2001 crisis, the 2008, nine crisis, and the current crisis that we've happened to is long behind, um, <laughs> decimating and destroying and, and genociding a whole group of people for 400 plus years. So I think that we were in the front of the line. If you're going to print money, not in the back. No, I, and I, I think that. that I think everybody so, in the chat watching this show, everybody will agree with you 100%. Thank so you, I think that that's the point. Like why, why, if we've been in the forefront, we built your country for you. That, that's, uh, you know, um, the, the Capitol um, monument was built and by, by, the blood of black people, every single place in America that you can turn around and look at, we're built on the backs of black people. White wealth is right. built on white American wealth is mm -hmm. built on the backs of black people. So how do we end up at the end of the line where someone still thinks that they have to dole out the money for us? Right. And I tell you why, because we have not shown, um, in this modern era that we are organized enough once again, because if they were dealing with the black people of, you know, the 19 uh, turn of the century. So if we're talking about late 1800s, early 1900s, all the way up until the 1930s and 40s, they would have a very different conversation with us. Um, right, right. We, we weren't Absolutely. the black people who are, are looking for acceptance and who are looking That's for facts. European st standards of, of beauty, of, you know, positions. Facts. We didn't need any of that. And we still don't. I think that right. the issue is, is that you, we've been so well brainwashed and we've been so well um, conditioned. And I'm glad you brought that up because Yanga had a concern about reparations saying that he, that he, he doesn't want us to put it back into the system. And I understand and respect that argument. However, uh, I have so I'm slightly... sorry. He doesn't want to put what into the system? Okay. So he was saying, uh, and Yanga, I don't want to, he's in the chat. He was saying that we should change the system first because if we don't the reparations <laughs> will go back into the it'll go back into the system basically go right back to the white man which i kind of i kind of agree with and i kind of don't at the same time because i feel like the system that we're in if we you know this is where md said if we had the reparation it would give us the push to make those investments but Yang on the other hand, he wants to do away and just comes up with a whole new, this, another system, an economical system. So that's I mean, where we're Okay. At. So if I understand what you're saying, you know, be patient with me. Okay. Um, what I what I understand you saying is that Yanga believes that we have to change the system in order to get reparations first. Change what system? Mm -hmm. I mean, this this is the system. Hi, Yanga. Hey, no, no I don't. I, no, I'm good. Great show. I'm I want to uh, just comment on a couple of things that you said. Uh, integration. Uh, our acceptance of integration, uh, as far as history has shown me, is our acceptance of American corruption and our um, forgiving of their uh, attempt to genocide us. So, yes. The, this is the issue, is that uh, when we accept integration on American of, of, let me be very specific, of Jim Crow American standards, we are saying we forgive you for the lynchings. We forgive you for destroying and dropping bombs on our communities and all of your governments being implicated in this. And we don't expect you to to um, to genuinely repair uh your actions and um therefore we do accept you giving us whatever um subsidies you think that we are um are allowed we do accept that you will put us at the bottom of your capitalist capitalistic totem pole um, because you need someone to be on the bottom and we are accepting that position and we absolutely accept that you will never um, you will never come clean with the truth and that you will never, ever. Oh, snap. Dang, she was on the roll. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're, you're muted. You're muted. Oh, shoot. Dang it. No. Oh, oh, man. No. I mean, Nation mom is the bomb. 
Yeah, she was on she the road. The bomb, yo. Oh, shit. That's... Let, me, let, let me send her another I, 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 Damn, I, I, She I probably like that's the probably the internet. That's the yeah. internet. Yeah, that her internet is, is... I, I like to believe that she that I was saying things that were similar to what she maybe not as articulate and as in depth, but uh, Deacon of Reality, right, Deacon? No, but, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was shut down. Look, okay, so her internet is recharging. It's recharging, okay. y'all. She just texted me. All right, so yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like like I said, she's full of surprises, bro. I didn't know where she was going to go. I, you know why? I don't know. You I know why know. it doesn't? I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't surprise me because she's an intelligent black woman, and when you do your research. <laughs> You see the effects of capitalism. You see capitalism uh, pre Jim Crow and post Jim Crow, and like she's saying, and 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 uh, are doing Jim Crow, not pre pre and during Jim Crow and post Jim Crow. But like she was saying, and I totally agree. When you look out of it, the economic disparities only grow. Like she said, capitalism, and 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 I thought I've said this. You know, maybe I'm not as pretty as no, Nature you Mark. said it. No, you said it. Yeah. And that's why I'm glad she's on here because now yeah. I didn't know her stance, Shango. I, I just yeah. know that she texted me about the show that we did and she was like, well, y'all both wrong. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And so I didn't know where she was going to come. Well, I did not I, know. I just know that, yeah. uh, I mean, we, 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 and, and we definitely got to do the show tomorrow because we're going to deal with Canadian socialized medicine because yeah. we we going yeah. with that yango with, with Zanzi. Okay. I don't know yes. where he stands. So this is all this is all oh, just a oh, boom to this level. Yeah, they cut oh, my that too. is God not damn. allowed. You know, <laughs> you know the only thing we need to know is what's that octagon thing. <laughs> damn yeah they Absolutely. cut my internet too. I'm trying to get you back on bloop they cut my house <laughs> God damn. <laughs> okay nature mom you're talking about well, we, oh man, I'm lost. I, yeah, you, yeah. To see, uh, you were talking about capitalism. You were talking about how it is now and how they have. We're at the bottom of the total. Yeah, the way okay, that so we exist. In. I think something that's really important here. I want to define two very important points so that we can make sure that everyone who's with us today are speaking on the same exact. Um, uh, knowledge points. So let's talk about capitalism. What is capitalism based on, um, you know, what they call the father of capitalism, Marxism's point of view. Uh, we know that there were actually uh, women and there were, there were people who had a very deep um, idea, ideology of capitalism before, but, um, but let's just make sure that we're on the same exact definition. So when I'm talking about capitalism, we're talking about the bourgeoisie of Marx's definition versus the uh, pro proletariat. So bourgeoisie are the rich who own, who do not work, and they have complete control of all of the resources. And we have the proletariat who are the laborers and who do not own yet must give their time as labor in order for the system uh, to produce money, uh, produce goods that produce money, but they don't own any of these monies. So when we're talking about capitalism, that is capitalism. And uh, who are we as black people after um, you know, the great migration, after um, these great cities that were um, that were targeted, bombed, uh, and looted, pirated um, in America, they they these communities were spread across every state that I found so far, and I still don't have a number of how many cities actually existed because this information was intentionally buried. Your your ancestors' documents were intentionally destroyed and right. buried, their bodies with it, the forensics with it. This was an intentional effort that is still that is still collaborated till this day. So wow. when I talk about that capitalism, that's that system. And we were already declared to be the bottom 
of that system. We were already decided to be, we were no longer going to have our own economic systems. We were already decided to not uh, have education once again, because they realized when we moved to the North and we started having uh, access to education, we swallowed it whole. And we not only like swallowed it, but excuse my you know language, but we shit gold after we swallowed it. And we knew what to do with it. And um, and we were hungry for it and we loved it and we had a passion for it. And we had a, a very deep, resilient pride that helped us to excel in ways that the rest of the country could not excel. Mm. And uh, the the target, the same as when they put our ancestors on those slave ships, was to cut our self-confidence to cut our um, self-efficacy. That were the first two targets at that period of time. And again, I love this guy. I've I've mentioned him before as one of my um, heroes of financial literacy, Jasper Singh. You know, um, he often says, you know, that, uh, you know, the first thing that that is taken away from you uh, to know financial uh, freedom is the education. It's the first thing taken away from you. And it's the right. first thing that they took away from us. And one other thing that he always says is that history, you know, may not always look the same, but it rhymes. <laughs> and it's so true. You know, uh, we can definitely see so many similarities in time. So we can see the similarities to when um, they put our ancestors on those shadow boats Um, to shackle them and to take away every sense of heritage, pride, dignity, and strength, inner strength and efficacy. And it was done once again when our communities were destroyed after we built them from nothing. So as Black Sun and I keep saying, these communities, they started with absolutely nothing behind them and they built themselves to thrive. And the first thing that they did after they pirated and looted them was they stripped them of their pride and their self-efficacy. So here we are once again, we get into, you know, the 70s, you know, this is after the Black is Beautiful movement and people are really starting to appreciate themselves as, you know, just um, brown skinned people. You know, we're not sure, you know, are we African? Are we American? Are we a little bit of both? (laughs) Do we have a place? Once again, it's rhyming. And the thing that was taken from us during this era uh, was our our self-efficacy, number one, our ability to know that we can. That's what self-efficacy is. For those of you, you know, I'm I'm throwing this word at you because I teach my children this word a lot. When you know you can, then you will. And this knowing that we can keeps getting stripped from us. And, you know, when you put subsidies into into the home and you say, yeah, you could as a unit, as a family, but now we are going to remove the man from your unit because we are not going to give you these free, these subsidies. Right. We, we won't give you employment. We Federal won't government. give you, we won't give you housing that you can own, a property that you could build on. We will not allow you to build your own businesses. We will we refuse, absolutely refuse to, to give you loans so that you can start your own projects. And we won't even let you cross certain street lines. Right. Yes. Let, you let are. Say this. Go- with, the, with the hair care, we already got. So that's yeah. billions of dollars we had in our we had we like that's money we came out of our pockets. Why, we, why are we buy, you know. buying L'Oreal? And let's be specific: we're buying L'Oreal since since 1960, uh, 1963, and L'Oreal is still knowingly putting products in our uh, it, putting ingredients in our products knowingly that are carcinogenics that uh, causes cancer, that causes alopecia, that um, keeps us coming back for the products that aren't working. And yet we keep going back for it. So what? why is that? I did some studying in that. It's because 
They have brainwashed us since the Black is Beautiful movement to believe, and let, let, let me quote the advertisements of the time, yes, Black is beautiful, but it's more beautiful with our products. <laughs> you hear that? Oh, God. Wow. Y'all gonna make me get my, I know it, I'm about to go get my beret. Y'all gonna make me black man. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and we still buy that concept today, right. you know, and it's global. It's not just in America, you guys. It, it's I right, one of the first right. I shops mean. that I walked in where I am and the man takes me to a wall of skin whitening products. And he was so shocked when I told him, if I whiten my skin, I take away my beauty. This is not my wall. And he was shocked. He was just like, oh, okay. You don't want the light skin? No, I don't. <laughs> but to me, we not. have the light skin, we have the white cream. For you. For really? you. And, and it is it is deeply washed into our uh, dark skin Arabs and our Africans. And that- it, are this brain in, in dark skin Asians? Because let's be honest, the Asians that are being advertised uh, on on their national televisions are not the largest percent is Wait. of of represent, representation of the population. Hold on. They are I'm, dark skin people. I'm hearing some hypocrisy here, Nature Mom. You mean to tell me that Qatar is strict on food and diet, but it's okay to sell cancer cream? Am I hearing this right? Okay, okay, you know what? I'm not going to put you on the spot. But there's a restriction on food, right? No Monsanto in Qatar. Um, okay, so there's not... Okay. Hmm. There are some GMO products here. There are some GMO products here. Okay, okay, okay. So There's a lot of importation, although what I love to see with uh, the Qatar nation, especially since the blockade, the four-year blockade that happened was they did take power of their uh, own agricultural system. So they had one of the hugest uh, shipments of cows brought into their country so they could take control of their um, food products because before that blockade, everything was being imported. And uh, to uh, have agriculture that was local was a hobby, not something that is essential like they're trying to build now. So they're trying to build essential farming in Qatar right now. Okay, okay. So what someone did asked, take- uh, they oh. came in a cancer cream. Oh, oh that was uh, yeah, uh, sure, yeah. can- skin whitening creams. Hi. Uh, yeah, so skin whitening creams, uh, which oh, does that's have right. we're, we're talking to an American audience. Explain yeah, to yes. an American audience what skin whitening cream is, because I think yes. yeah, a lot of us might be lost. Oh, okay. I mean, and, and so this is something that should not be such a lost conversation, because since the you know 1950s, there has been a huge campaign um, of of uh, marketing, specifically targeted at uh, the black consumer. Uh, to straighten their hair and to whiten their skin for the profit of the overall um, cosmetics industry. So, um, yeah, when they call them, I I think they call them toners sometimes. They call them skin whiteners. They call them um, blemish creams. Uh, All of these have the same um, basic um, ingredients in it. Uh, I could give you the very scientific technical term, (laughs) which I won't because I I got in trouble for that before. (laughs) But the basic ingredient of this is uh, actually a... um, it's something that you don't want to actually uh, absorb into your uh, dermis, into your bloodstream, because it is carcinogenic and it mm. does uh, create, has created um, cancer and has been linked to not only cancers, but uh, endocrine blockers. So basically uh, your endocrine system, your thyroid system um, shuts down slowly. Uh, from these products. So yeah, this is not something you want to have absorbed in your skin or ingested in any way. Right. Uh, so 
so yeah, but going back to the main conversation, because this is only a, I mean, we could have a whole topic. I, I wrote a 30 page paper on the cosmetics industry and it, uh, the way that it has influenced the black community and industrialization in the black community since the 1960s. I can take you all the way back actually to uh, the 17th century. Uh, right. to the present day of the influence of uh, European Eurocentric standards on black people and the way that it has influenced our um, psychology, the way that mm. it's influenced our, um, our, our, um, our self-loathing and, uh, and where all of this comes from. Uh, if anybody's interested in my my dissertation i feel free to you know uh dm me or black sun and I, i'll send you a copy of it no, i'd be happy to share we're gonna get you a day we're gonna get you a day and we're <laughs> right in fact yeah no, when you get it what do you think son oh okay it's yeah, 30 yeah, pages hey, you know, there's no, no <laughs> way you can do the, the most play. important points absolutely I could definitely yeah, we give you presentations. Yeah, we do presentations. Yes. But, you know, back to the topic of today, which is, you know, I love the question that Black Sun asked. So where do we go from here? Because, you know, it's it's not just enough to know where we came from. It's it's up to us to take that information and to translate that into actions that actually creates a new difference. And what we need now is this new difference, especially because in this economy, I mean, I'm sure each one of you are opening up your YouTube, um, you know, accounts every day or watching your local news. And, you know, there's so much coming at you um, regarding uh, inflation and recession and finances right now. And it's very overwhelming for someone who um, is is at the beginning of really educating yourself, what all of this means, how does this directly affect you and, and you know, how to process it, cope with it and do something about it. And I think that the most important uh, points uh, that we can take from this is that it is time for us to, when, uh, I talk about this a lot uh, <laughs> when I'm invited on here, is financial literacy really um, pulling into your household and, and, and within yourselves time every day that you educate yourselves on what is money, how does it work in the system, and where do you fit in on these different levels of economic uh, cycling that are happening. It's important to know uh, where you are. So, you know, I don't know if any of you are aware right now, but there is a huge uh, drop in real estate right now. Uh, a very unexpected uh, side effect of this um, this inflation and this uh, recession conversation that's been happening and all of these huge tech companies and crypto companies that have been right. laying off a lot of people. Um, but you know, how does that really relate to uh, a community that one is still in the wake of, uh, you know, uh, Reagan era, that's still in the wake of drugs dumped into our neighborhoods era uh, after, you know, um, you know, uh, after um, North. the, the, uh, 2000 oh, all north yes that's that's a whole nother conversation too and you know um uh economic um you know what, uh, Nate, you mom, you know, can i jump this in here when you from you guys it's so nice like this conversation is just growing so much and you know I, so i appreciate everything that you're saying and i have to agree with you as well i mean i think that going back to the financial literacy um, understanding, you know, um, that this system of um, this system has been rigged uh, since we were integrated into it, and um, and to how do you overcome any rigged system? You become smarter than the rigger. You know, okay. you get to the situation where you are so versed um, that you you can maneuver your way. It is a chess game. It is poker. 
<laughs> you know, it's not blackjack as much as it, it, it is strategy. And in this strategy game, we really lost a lot of footing um, since we lost our communities. Um, when, like I shared last week, you know, uh, when our communities were decimated, there were people who went back to rebuild after they were pirated, looted, everything was taken. They went back to rebuild. But at right. that point, what they didn't realize was that, you know, same with the hair game in the cosmetics industry, you had so many hard hitting, um, you know, people with bigger resources and, and um, a part of the monopolizing um, uh, marketing system and, 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 um, like Bill Sorry, Gates. media system. Media is just, as we know, we, we know in our hearts how um, how rigged our media is, but we really don't right. get the psychology of it. And to understand the psychology of it, you know, we are put in a position of panic and uh, and, and, and stress all the time when we're listening to our media. Um, you know, I, I was listening to someone actually, I'll just say it from my own words, well, you know, going through some life situations, I've moved a few, few countries I've, I've, I've owned businesses in the United States. I've owned businesses in other countries, even if I was not legally a, a resident of those countries, <laughs> Right. I thrived. I, I built my, my business, um, you know, that worked. And, um, and what I've learned through all of those uh, situations is that um, when you build your community and your community supports you, no matter where you are in the world, they believe in you. And I think that the first step is believing in ourselves and believing that we can get there again. Uh, the second thing is, you know, why did I, bu I build, you know, it's such a risk. Why did I build businesses in countries where I was not a resident? Well, because that's where I lived and I had children and that I had to feed and a family I had to help support. And, um, you know, my back, you know, very similar to, to, you know, the black communities of the turn of the century, my back was up against a wall. I knew how to run businesses from when I was in U.S., so I used my skill sets. And um, when I believed in myself, you know, they believed in me with me. So I think that that is the really um, something like I keep saying this word a lot tonight, self-efficacy, like really believing that you can is the first step to repairing a lot of the damage that have been done Um I think another thing personally that I always do is I always remind myself one that um, things are not always as bad as they seem, especially when it comes through the media. Um, the media right. is there to sensationalize and to right. sell that sensationalization. And um, so they're there to make people panic. When they make people panic, they control markets. They control uh, wow. the way that your money flows. Um, when you can sit back and you can analyze, there's a very different approach that you're going to take when you, when you are, um, and you Me are and you're you're tripping on this because we're going through this on YouTube. So that's why when you said that it, it, it hit Yang at me at the same time, but okay. I'm curious. Well, I'm it, curious. Yeah, it's you'll share it. that with me later. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, 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 but no, really, the, the psychology is the same. You know, I mean, I think that that's one of the things that, you know, my, my, my family, my husband's always asking me, like, why are you always learning all this stuff, this science and psychology? And because when you know how the manipulation happens, you know how to over overcome it. You know what yeah. you're looking at. And I think that that's really important, um, you know, to building your self-efficacy. Okay. So the next step would be um, knowing how to invest yourself where you are. So let's say, for example, you know, you've got $10 in your pocket, but just remember, you've got that $10 in your pocket. You've got uh, at least 10 good people around you that you can, um, that it's a part of your social network. Because don't forget, we had social network long before uh, Zuckerberg. 
And um, mm -hmm. when you know who your social network is and how you guys can really thrive um, and, and support each other for every, you know, person that, you know, they know at least six, probably to a thousand other people right. who can help you get to the resources that you need to get to. So the most important thing before reaching out is knowing exactly what you want to do. So let's talk about, you know, for example, my uh, um, black son brought up uh, Yanga's sister, you know, she does hair. She wants to do something specific, you know, to, um, you know, bring something innovative to black hair community. Um, I'm sure that through, you know, Yanga, Nature Mom, Black Sun, and Angel, uh, there's a, at least 10,000 people that she can reach through those four connections. And right. we have to realize that that's there. Um, most importantly would be her knowing exactly what she wants to do, being very specific on her goal, um, being very specific on her timeline and saying, okay, with this $10, this, it, it might only be $10 today, but the next, you know, income I get, you know, if it's a hundred dollars, I'm going to. I'm going to live off of 50 of those dollars and I'm going to reinvest the other 50. You know, let, let's be honest, you guys, uh, Dolce Cabana or whatever, Gucci, you know, Louis Vuitton, they thank you. You made them rich. Now you can make you rich. And it's time to take the money out of their pockets and put it back into your own. Um, and it's possible because, like I said, in the hair care industry alone, you are making a lot of people very, very rich. So just imagine every item that you look around in your house right now, you have made those people wealthy. You right. are their consumer. And, uh, you know, the black community, uh, black American guy, let me be very specific because it's not the black community globally. This is only that nine point uh, that ninety eight point four billion trillion. Sorry, is from uh, no billion. Sorry, <laughs> it's a three trillion dollar right. industry uh, overall when you add all the products. But we're only talking. I'm only talking about hair care products alone. That's nine point ninety eight point four billion dollars this year. And it is projected to grow to over 190 billion in the next five years. You are 97% of their revenue. Right. And how much of that will we see back in our community? 1%, 2%, how, how much of that? <laughs> no. That's a funny joke. <laughs> 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 oh wow. Oh, uh, that's Angel. good. Angel, you've been quiet, man. What's going on, man? I'm just in the cut listening. Okay. Hi, okay. Angel. <laughs> hey, how, how, how's everybody? Very good, good. thank you. Very good I mean, show. I I, oh, I will you. say, you know, back to your, your question, Yanga. Exactly. Um, I, I think you hit on it uh maybe 20 minutes ago. Who are we going to to buy these products? We're going to the Korean shops. Um, I, I've been hard hit a lot, especially, uh, from people, um, that I, I love and I care about in LA. I love my community in South central Los Angeles. What's that? Um, but, but when I, when I talk about, um, you know, the, the Korean shops and the way that, uh, the representation in the black communities, Okay, after the shooting of the young lady who went in the store and the, the Korean owner thought she was stealing something, they put a black person or two in their shops. Um, but no, that is not going back into, you know, the black community. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is not the definition. And it's the same as uh, uh, Biden's, um, sorry to like uh, pull it up like this, but uh, Biden's uh, White House uh, deals that he has of, um, uh, you know, he wants to do public works in the black neighborhoods and he wants to, um, 
uh, you know, put all these new laws. If you go through each one of these laws, not one of those dollars are actually going to any uh, black construction companies. They're wow. not guaranteed. Uh, none of that money is actually going into any black education. And when we talk about reparations, you guys, the first thing I'm going to think of as a mother is you owe my my children who are descendants of chattel slavery their education for free period so i don't care like what portion of reparation you can you f figure out your 40 acres and your mill yeah, later just yeah, put a whole chunk <laughs> okay okay so, okay you know what oh, all on. right oh, i'm glad it. you brought we're that up so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you on the socialism. Me. Because what is socialism? They're gonna, calling you. They're gonna have your no. I I'm no. Once again, and I said it earlier. I do believe that there is a difference between um, paying reparations to a sovereign entity and socialism. I don't support socialism. Socialism means the control of a government that gets to regulate markets. I don't believe in that. Um, I don't think Me, that our government, uh, socialism means um, a, a control of a government. So meaning the government owns all the resources and they get to set market prices. I don't believe in that. I believe in private ownership. Yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, I, I, once again, when I'm, I'm saying, um, a very similar way to where they passed the bill for a free education for Native Americans, although we, we see the way that they handle it. You know, they stick them in the back of the desert and put a bunch of alcohol in their hands and then they call that, uh, you know, reparation. No, thank you. That's why I don't want it in your hands. You, I want a fund <laughs> that is a completely separate sovereign entity uh, of the reparationists. And the American government um, pays their um, what, what is it when you when you go to prison and you uh, pay for your crime after you serve restitution. Your believe me, Rest I know restitution. I the American government <laughs> they get that every month. American, in my opinion, the American government on every level owes Black Americans restitution. I don't even want to call it reparation anymore. You owe restitution. You have committed heinous crimes. Restitution, did you hear me? Yes, thank you. I did. And I believe that the American government owes uh, the descendants of shadow slavery restitution. They have committed heinous crimes. They, um, their crimes are leaking out. Um, they're still, uh, we're still waiting for mass forensics to be brought to the table to prove their heinous crimes, their, their genocidal attacks against, um, descendants of shadow slavery and we deserve restitution. And I believe that these mass funds of restitution should be put into a, a sovereignty fund for the descendants of shadow slavery and the number one area that uh one of those you know those main funds goes to is giving free education to descendants of black slave and their descendants um because it is one of the main things that was taken from us the first thing that was taken from us in an attempt to dehumanize us and to um to um take away our self-efficacy. It's the first thing you, you must give back. Um, so we're still living in the uh, ricochet of, of that, that heinous barbaric behavior. And I believe that is the first thing that should be returned. And should it be returned through the administration and uh, the American administration? Absolutely not. It, it, it's mm. like asking the mafia to hold my liquor for me. No, thank you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. You know, or asking the cartel to hold my cocaine. I don't need you to. You know, <laughs> separate entity of sovereignty that uh, delegates and helps to um, properly and and with very clear transparency um, take care of um, making sure that the descendants 
and and every person still alive <laughs> to this day having access to education and 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 when i say education um not just your uh institutions of brainwashing uh any education they feel uh, and can show that will um elevate uh, their economic situation, their family situation, their mental health situation, their financial health situation. Absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. that would be step one for me. Um, so when we talk about socialism, absolutely not. I am not a part of uh, socialism uh, in America because uh, yes, I, I am an American. I am a proud American. Um, no, let me be specific. I'm a proud black American um, who grew up in a system that tried to separate me and my family and my descendants from them. So, you know, I'm not asking you for anything. I'm telling you what I want. And what I want is my right to pursue my happiness and my well-being and for you not to stand in the way of that. And so what that means for me is I believe that uh, I have every right to uh, economic power. Um, if we wait for this uh, generational wealth to catch up to the wealth that our descendants have built for, um, you know, uh, um, for the white supremacist terrorists and their descendants? No, I don't think that we are going to be able to um, catch up in that race, not even if we had another Florence Joyner in, in this race with them. Um, I think that what has to happen at this point is this country pays the restitutions and they put us in a place where we can um, very systematically and specifically target the places where we have been um, pirated, uh, all the specific places that we have been um, economically um, uh, um, blacklisted and um, blockaded. And we need uh, economic systems that um, reconstitute and rebuild our citizens that have been um, deemed, um, you know, um, prisoners uh, who have been deemed, uh, um, uh, what's Political the prisoners. word? Sorry, say it again. Yeah, this is franchise quality nature mom. <laughs> Uh, you you okay, Black Sun? I'm go ahead and get it out. Oh no, no, I'm just I'm just I'm just clowning a little bit. Man. Go ahead, man. Hey, I'm just clowning a little bit. No, I don't have much. Uh, I enjoy the show. Uh, I, I don't want to mess up the bill, but I, I do want to take time one time and, and explain socialism, the road to communism, as an idea. It's an ideology. It you know. When I use when I say that, people say, "Well, show me where that happens at." But uh, one day I do want to explain uh, the the methodology. But I, I enjoyed the show today. Like I, reparations, when you talk rep reparations, is supposed to be restitution, but they they leave the restitution part out for the heinous crimes, not during slavery, not just during slavery, but the. Yeah. The hundred years up to the uh, the civil rights movement, a hundred years, yes. And they act like the civil rights movement was something that they gave us. No, we got civil rights in eighteen sixty five. So that's a hundred years of criminal activity against American citizens yes, exactly. that has never been paid for or exactly. uh, or justified. All you Absolutely. did in in nineteen sixty four under uh, the Civil Rights Act was solidify what we already had. We were already civil rights citizens. So you just admitted for 100 years you was breaking the law against us and we exactly. never got that restitution. Absolutely. That's, that's my point. Yes. I, I have to agree with you. And, you know, um, a lot of people don't see the civil rights movement the same way that you do. And I have to uh, absolutely support that. You know, we were already given the 14th, the 13th and the 14th Amendment. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of people are arguing right now the Roe versus Wade case and little do they um, re really want to admit that that case is only one line of the entire 14th Amendment. 
um, the uh, reversal that these different states are doing when they uh, compromise the 14th Amendment, the main three fourths of that law is our ability to be declared American citizens as black people. This is the main point, and no one discusses that. You know, everyone talks about abortion rights. You know, they did the same thing in Poland very recently. You know, they um, took away abortion rights. Uh, the the um, left wing government, right wing, sorry, government just took it away. They can, they have full power. And surrounding countries said, hey, you know what? And they took it away for every circumstance, for rape, for um, uh, um um, oh, sorry, my brain just like it's went off. Uh, but uh, they took it away for endangerment of the mother's life. Uh, they took it away for, um, you know, uh, knowing that the baby is not healthy, many reasons. And, um, and the thing that uh, was amazing was how all of the surrounding countries said, okay, your Polish government does is doing this. You guys feel free to come over to our country anytime right. you need to take care of your health, ladies. And these neighboring countries were very open arm, but their uh, their law uh, taking away women's right was very singular. It was only to that specific issue. America's issue with this Roe versus Wade is that they are compromising the entire 14th Amendment. And the main stake of the 14th Amendment is the fact that it, it declares, it designates whether or not we as Black Americans are American or not, and whether or not we get to maintain our freedom and our voting rights. And yet that is not a conversation that has hit one media outlet. I'm looking, I, I keep looking, you know, cause I'm, I'm curious. Sometimes you don't hear things inside of the country, but sometimes people will cover it outside of the country and say, Hey, you know, this is what they're saying inside the country, but this is what this issue is really about. And no one's even saying anything about that point outside of the country. And I think that like what I'm, I'm looking at right now at the economic situation, uh, you know, the fact that uh, Biden is giving all of these um, forgivenesses. He's trying to build the IRS task force over the next 10 years. I don't know if any of you are aware of this. No. Um, they, they want to include, um, uh, I mean, hun 800 and I, I i don't have the exact number in front of me we already but have almost, an irs task force what? oh they're they're beefing it up so um oh, they're they're goodness. they're already planning in this bill for those they're retiring and then they want to beef up their their irs ta task force uh over the next 10 years so they're saying that they want to do it because economically they want to make sure that um huge companies are going to be taxed like our Amazons, it's, you know, Googles, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But we know the truth, you know, uh, when you look at the specific on what they're, they're proposing, it, it says nothing about that. It says that, you know, they're just trying to put more, uh, um, man, uh, uh, should we say labor in place to, uh, reinforce, policies that are already taking place. So what are the policies that are taking place? Are they going after these, you know, um, big companies to put more tax dollars into the system? No, they, most of the people who they audit are, um, over 70% people who make 75,000 or less a year. So if they're beefing up that task force, what is that telling me? That's telling me, ladies and gentlemen, that not only did they take away all of, uh, you know, your health <laughs> status during uh, their pandemic, not only did they, um, you know, minimize your employment opportunities and put more of you on the streets, take more of you out of your home since 2008, um, not only, you know, um, did they... Uh, um, pacify you. I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, when I, I saw that, that crown act of 2001, um, you know, passed where thank you. Um, I now get to wear my hair as it naturally grows from my scalp right. without someone being able to discriminate against me. And, and just like you said, um, this is a 2001 act 
and I'm supposed to be proud of this. No, I've, I, I've been proud of my hair since I discovered that it was beautiful, curly spirals, not damaged by, you know, creamy crack, you know, hair straightening systems that were, um, you know, um, influencing my caregivers uh, to make me look as, you know, European centric as they could from a very young age and exposing me to those carcinogenics and, and those, you know, endocrine altering and blocking, you know, um, substances that compromise my health. Uh, from a young age, but now you're trying to make me feel good that uh, my employer uh, cannot openly discriminate against my me wearing my natural hair in the workplace and, and fire me. We're in 2001, and like you said, um, we were emancipated uh, uh, supposedly in uh, 1865, which still took what another, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, it took another, uh, I had that data in front of me, uh, the last uh, sl uh, slave in Texas that was actually freed was 1921. Right. That was told uh, that there was actually an, an emancipation that even took place. Uh, and and yet through the civil rights movement, the only thing that I can see that you, you really told me was you don't have to um, build your own um, industrialization. You don't have to build your own economies anymore. You're welcome to come and sit in the black sections of our stores and buy our products. <laughs> right. And I say, no, thank you. Uh, I prefer to be the producer. I prefer to be the entrepreneur. I prefer to be the educator. I prefer to be the financially uh, elite. And I prefer for you to be for me because you were never able to produce these goods from the beginning. Right. And that's why you have exploited me and my descendants to this day. No, thank you anymore. So I guess, <laughs> sorry. No, that was good. I had to go off on the tangent. Um, well, we, hey, we coming up to two hours. Yeah. Um, I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, uh, shoot. I, man, I, I want to end, end on this. Uh, did y'all hear what the Fed said? That, that, that the last news, the Federal Reserve said the problem with the economy is that wages are too high. Of course they did. So... So that's the problem with the economy. The wages are too high, and that's what's causing inflation. It, it, it always attacks the working people. Yes. Okay, since you're on here, Inyame, because me and Nature Mom discussed this earlier, why are they burning the crops since the wages are so high? Uh, I mean, you, you have to ask them. I don't, I don't know. They're paying the farmers thirty eight thousand an acre to just burn. They just destroy their crops. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what I said. Wow. Like what the hell? That, that sounds like a man. Let me. Man, this is me. not the first time in history. Remember, history rhymes, and the last time that that happened was in nineteen uh, nineteen twenty nine to nineteen thirty five during the Great, Great Depression. Depression. Right. Right. Jeez, man. What, so, what were you saying, what, Angel? I'm sorry, Angel. I had to say. <laughs> Angel. Oh, I didn't. I didn't say anything. I was just oh, oh. enjoying the, the, the conversation. Okay, so, so what you're saying, Nature Mom, is that the the Great Depression was caused by these destruction of uh, agriculture that they did before. Uh, no, the Great Depression was caused by. Um, too much borrowing and debt, you know, which is what we call our boom and our bust systems. Um, but what spurred on, um, you know, uh, basically balancing uh, their economic books was to create force famines. So what else does a burning of a crop do but create a forced famine? There's already famines um, that are being forced all over the world right now. We